So it's early afternoon, we're running some reconnaissance of the area for somewhere around this cornfield is going to be our home for the night. Yes, I'm talking cornfield stealth camping. So it's been a little while since we've had ourselves a good little stealth camp. So I'm playing by the rules, arrive late, leave early. I've got my bag packed and ready to go. So we're simply out here this afternoon to find a good space to uh, set up the bivvy. So as we stroll along here, let me give you an idea of what we're working with. To the north of us, we have a property. To the east and the south, we're flanked by woodland. And to the west of us, there is a main road. So as we walk the eastern edge of this cornfield, we walk a tree line. Uh, the challenges we face here would be the dog walkers. Inside of these woods is a popular dog walking area. A path runs straight through it. So at any time, a dog and its walker could come charging out of the tree line. Therefore, I'm not entirely convinced on this eastern perimeter. And as we walk this tree line in the opposite direction, it becomes more sloped and there's not so much of a flat surface anywhere. So as we walk the western edge of this cornfield, there's vehicle and foot traffic, and there's also street lights, and street lights being a good thing and a bad thing. Obviously with street lights, wouldn't need to use a torch, it gives me a bit more visibility, but then at the same time, it gives others visibility. And on the topic of visibility, this time last year, all this corn would have been towering above us, but the recent drought we've had uh, it's really scuppered its progress. So I'd imagine I have to uh, make like a meerkat and pop my head up every now and then to make sure that we're alone out here. So we come and ducked under this tree here. It's relatively flat. Uh, this looks like a pretty good opportunity where we could lay a bivy. Definitely a possibility. So I'm looking at this map here, satellite imagery, uh, and there appears to be a gap in the corn. So if this map is an updated one and we can locate it position that might be a possibility also plenty of breakfast for the morning if my calculations are correct this gap should be just ahead of us It looked a lot bigger on the maps. But that, like this is totally reasonable. We can work with this. So uh, yeah, I think we found our place. So I reckon we'll be back out here around dusk to get set up. So I'll see you guys in a little while. Made it. Welcome back to the cornfield, my friends. It's time to pitch camp. But I thought I'd just take some time to share with you what we're using out here tonight. Dutch Army hoop bivy, low lying, out of sight, equipped with DPM quick to assemble and disassemble, a real staple in the stealth camping kit. Got about a litre and a half of water in the platypus platy. 
got the Stanley cook set, one cup coffees, and a hexi stove. A little Privet sleeping bag, check out the size of this thing. Absolutely tiny and perfect for keeping the loadout compact. No good for three seasons of the year, but absolutely in its element in the summer. Climate Static V Recon. Again, compact, but doesn't fare so well in the winter. Offers relative comfort though, so. Dinner, not so healthy, but quick and easy to cook. No mess and uh, fills a hole. Here we have our little four class Hez torch. Going to level with you guys, uh, obviously, I've got torches from Frunite, Olight, and whatnot. But this 14 pounds four class head torch from Decathlon is actually my favorite. So, a real simple, down and dirty loadout, nothing spectacular, nothing more than I need or want. We have no rain on the forecast tonight, relatively clear skies, so we'll be stargazing through the mesh tonight. So as always, in an effort to conserve our night vision and lower the visibility, we go for the red light. So obviously some torches, you need to scroll through the modes to get to the red light, but uh, it's, it's the first setting on this little head torch. It's pretty cool. And speaking of visibility, we're well, obviously cammed up as always. If we're going to do this, there's no point in being in bright colors and standing out. So everything from uh, the bivy bag to the pack to the clothes, we're, we're, we're good. So we're just about to get ourselves some water on the boil so we can heat up our dinner, have ourselves a coffee, all that good stuff. I do love this little stove. It just works. All I've done here is build a little stone wall to stop that flame from getting too big. Because what we don't want to do is have that flame flickering and glowing and lighting up this whole area. So, uh, problem solved. Well, I don't know whether you guys can hear that, but it's really annoying. Uh, I must have picked the only day ever to come to a place like this and there's some kind of karaoke going on or something because that's not the original songs that's awful I hate that song anyway Fun fact, I'm not actually a huge fan of cornfields. Ever since I saw that movie Signs, with the old 
the aliens in the cornfields? No. <laughs> Hollywood's good at putting you off things. But, that being said, I can stand up right now and know exactly where I am and where I have to go to get out. If this was taller than me and I couldn't see through it, man, that might, that might be some panic inducing shit. So I remember camping in this uh, cornfield before it was a cornfield. It was just a, a massive, overgrown field, bushes, and it was it was perfect for camping and well stealth camping. I remember it got chilly that night. I, I lit myself up this tiny little fire, and um, real tiny, but it gave off enough warmth, and it, it was pretty much perfect. And then. Uh, and then, yeah, they uh, turn it into a cornfield. So now I'm going to sit back and uh, do some stargazing. And then I think I'm going to head to bed. I'm not sure how well I'm going to sleep because the, the deers be running in and out of the corn. So, uh, yeah, there was one walking just behind us over here not so long ago. And it's always there. Once you hear the footsteps, is it you, you, you have to figure out, is it four-legged or two-legged? If it's four-legged, we're fine. If it's two-legged, well, we better get ready to go. So, hopefully we'll have a quiet night, but uh, yeah, all the stars are out. Gonna do some stargazing and uh, see you in the morning. Morning has arrived. It's coffee time. So, not a bad night. Karaoke stopped around 11, so that was really nice. We've already had a couple of dog walkers, cyclists on the main trail through the cornfield, uh, but I think we're far enough within the corn to remain undetected. I think we chose the right place to uh, set up the bivvy. I think we would have been susceptible to the dog walkers on both the east and the west sides. So this is why it's important to come out on location and have a look around. Taking all of the factors into account, humans, animals, vehicles, street lights, we do the research and you should be golden. So a successful stealth camp no farmers, no crop circles. Now we're going to get our stuff together, go eat some breakfast. <laughs>